the year 1987. The Beatles released their first CDs, Thatcher, One Her Third Term, and Gorbachev and Dragon Dragon met in Washington, D.C. In October of that year, the first issue of one of the most iconic puzzle books was released in the UK. The character from the puzzles is called different names in various countries. He has a Facebook page as well, which is followed by millions. I'm talking about Waldo, or Wally, as he is called in the UK. The figure who has traveled the world wearing his iconic red and white beanie and sweater and jeans. If you don't know how this works, you have to find this character among this busy scene. Pause the video to give it a try. Are you done? Here he is. Was it a bit difficult? Let's learn the science behind this. In 2000, as was reported by MIT News, a study was conducted on visual search. Visual search is a technical term for looking for something with your eyes. This also includes zeroing in on a target like Waldo in this case. There are two theories on this. First is serial processing, which can be compared to a mental spotlight moving on a page. The other is parallel processing, where one looks at the whole page at once and zooms in on relevant features. Scientists have been divided on this subject for quite a while now. However, in the study, they discovered that it was a combination of both, both the processes. Researchers studied macaques and recorded the activity of specific neurons and their eye movements while they studied a complex array, equivalent to a Waldo puzzle. The neurons they studied belonged to the V4 area, a mid-region of the visual cortex, which is known to be important to attention. Neurons specialize as to what they detect best. When red is in view, a red neuron will give off a stronger signal, and it is even stronger when the brain is looking for red. Even before we see red, and if we are actively searching for red, red neurons will increase their activity. However, the question is that how does one neuron raise its voice over other neurons? It's not just a question of the individual neuron. It's how it cooperates with other neurons to make their voices heard. The research shows that to increase the signal, the neurons synchronize the activity. For example, in a crowded room, if a person randomly starts talking, will he be heard amongst so much noise in the room? No. But if, a, but if many people start talking in unison, the, what they are saying be clearly heard. Synchronization of the signals helps explain how the brain uses parallel processing to concentrate on relevant features in a complex scene. Then the brain switches to serial processing, scrutinizing relevant objects sequentially to find the object of desire. So, how do we do What is the most efficient method? The first base guidelines based on this map of points are Waldo almost never appears on the top left corner. That's because there was always some postcard from Waldo in the top left corner describing the setting and some interesting facts about it. Waldo is rarely located on the edges. One theory on this is that such a location would be obvious. Waldo is never located on the very bottom of the right page. Whenever you flip to the next page in a book, the bottom of the right page is the first thing you see. Thus, the bottom of the right page would be one of the worst places to hide Waldo because that's the most viewed part of the book. Dr. Randall S. Olson on his blog found out the most efficient method of finding Waldo. He made a density map of the locations. He then needed to check every possible location that Waldo could be at while taking as little time as possible. That means we need to cover as much ground as possible without any backtracking. In the whole series, there are 68 puzzles, meaning 68 points. These 68 points can be arranged in, two, in around 2.48 into 10 to the power 96 possible ways. There's more arrangements than the number of atoms in the universe. However, he used smarter methods to visualize the optimal search path. He plugged in the points in an algorithm and visualized the path in this graph. He colored the paths by whether then the first blue, second orange, third green or final red, one fourth of the path. The colored path is too complicated, hence the black path is the average path and it is put for easy usage.